יוד חסר מן א', Okay, we left off Yud Chesem and Aleph with Howard. Mm -hmm. Howard disappeared. You have the Gemara's are right over there, or right, be, right on the mm -hmm. table. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tanu Rabbonon. Okay, two dots on Yudchesu ben Aleph. Yesh beivri, sheim beivriyo. We find laws that pertain to the evdivri, which do not pertain to the maidservant, the Jewish maidservant. Yesh beivriyo, sheim beivri, and the laws which pertain to the evriyo, to the Jewish maidservant, which don't pertain to the male slave, Jewish slave. Yesh beivri, sheim beivri. Yesh beivri. What do we find that applies to the Jewish male slave, not to the am evriyo? Shuyotzi b'shonim. That after six years, he's released. Ubi yovel. When the yovel comes, he's released, regardless when it happens during the period of time. Ubi misas adon. And when the master dies, mashenki bivriya, which is not the case with ivriya, which the Gemara is going to ask, what he means. We had earlier that whatever the ivri has, except for the marzea, even the ivriya has, even the maidservant has. And the maidservant has an additional, she's yet to be seen on him. When she reaches puberty, she goes out. Yesh be ivriyo shehi, shari ivriyo yotzeo be seen on him. She leaves, she gains her freedom with puberty. The ain't an imkeres, the nishnis, which the Mars can discuss. She cannot be sold more than once by her father. Okay, the Mars can ask. If the father sells her once, and we're speaking where the master. Did the master marry her? Did he not marry her? Let's say the master marries her. There's, there's a concept known as Yisoma B'chayav. You could have an orphan, although her father's alive. Ernie. Yeah, how do you have an orphan if her father's alive? Right? So the Gemara says that on a Torah level, a father's permitted to marry his orphan's daughter even as a minor. As Biti Nosat Lishazeh. Father's believed. It can, has the ability, has the rights to marry off his daughter, even as a minor. Now, a father has the right to nullify his daughter's nadorim, vows, her oaths. She's 12 years old. Before she's fully mature, although she's an adult, he nullifies her nadorim and her shvurs. Okay? What happens if she, there is erisin? She marries, there's only kedushin, not nesuin. So then it's a partnership. The husband, and she makes a netter. The hu she's married, but not fully married. Not fully married in terms, she's not considered fully, so she did not fully leave, leave the domain of the father, and she did not fully enter into the domain of the husband. So now if she makes a netter, the netter has to be jointly nullified. The father and the husband jointly have to nullify the netter. If only one nullifies it, the netter is still in place. Okay? One second, one second. What happens if she becomes, she's fully married, she's in the Sua, this she's not Russo. So then she's fully in the domain of the husband, so she's left the domain of the, of the father. Now she's divorced or she's widowed. Once she's left the domain of the father fully, she never returns to that domain. Okay? What about, as, let's talk about, so that's within the context of Nadarim. What about a minor? A minor. Father marries her, gives her to a third party for Kedushin, Erison. And then the man divorces her or he dies. She reverts back to the domain of the father because she never fully left his domain. As long as she's partially his domain, when the other party who she's in his domain no longer exists, right? She's released from that, she's fully in the domain of the father. Erison's only, she's, posh, she's still partially. That's not Ersa. That's Nesuin. I'm sorry, Nesuin. So She's left the father's he domain dies, fully. And he dies, he's still a minor. What She's not. She does not go back to the domain of the father. Mm -hmm. So that's called, she's, although the father's alive, she's called Yisoma B'chayav. She's the equivalent of an orphan regarding the context of Kedushin. 
She's like an orphan who doesn't have a father. The father can no longer marry her off. Why? Because she already left his domain totally. Right? Now, if he, she, the father or the mother or the brother should marry her off, it's called rabbinic. It's a, it's a Kedushin Jabbanon. This is what we, the Gemara speaks about Mion. That until she's 12 years old, if she says to the husband, her, within this rabbinic marriage, I'm no longer interested in being with you. She walks out, it's not a problem. She needs no get. Because on a Torah level, she's not married. And it's only purely, why do they legislate this? To protect the girl from being molested. Sexually molested. That the husband would actually take care of her. As a minor. Once she reaches, let's say you have a Kedushin Rabbonon, and now she reaches adulthood. And the husband did not consummate the marriage after she reached, reaches adulthood. So it's still rabbinic. But since she appears to be an adult, and she is an adult, now she needs a get. Before she reaches adulthood, she could just walk out. Say, I'm not interested in the relationship any longer. But once she reaches adulthood, although the marriage is still rabbinical, now if, the, if she wants to be free to marry another party, now she needs to get to release her. But that, again, it's rabbinical. Okay, that's the aloha. So what we say over here, Ivriya Yotzebisimonim, she cannot be sold and then sold again. You cannot be sold twice. The father sells her once, he cannot sell her again. Umaftin osabal korcho. She's redeemed against the will, his will. Now, who's the, who's the his? The Gemara has a question. Is the his means the will of the master? Or it means against the will of the father? That's the question. Mashenge ivri, which is not the case with an ivri, with a, with a male slave. A male slave could be sold endless times over. Person steals or he financial hardship, he sells himself for six years, he's out, sells himself again. A man, male, could sell himself as many times, or the court could sell him as many times as he has to be sold. You know, steals again, they sell him again for what, for, to, to compensate the person he victimized. But a, a girl, she cannot be sold more than once. No, let's, let's say, let's say, the Gemara says like this, a male Jewish slave, we had earlier, it's a Pesach in the Torah, we learn it from, from a Jewish slave being sold to a non-Jew, it says, it's called Giron Kesef, if the man comes up with the money to reimburse the master for, the, for, for what he paid for him, and there's a balance and he pays him that, the master is obligated to release him, okay? So what we speak about over here that you could Redeem yourself against the will, or let's say it's the master. We're not speaking about we giving him the actually value. That's understood. That's not against his will. The, the slave has the right to repurchase himself before the years are up. That, that the Torah says explicitly. And that's, 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 the, that's the Gemara's issue here with the girl. So what does it mean? You could, you, she could redeem herself against the will of the master. If it's Giro and Kesef, and this was saying this, no, no, we're saying this is something she... A maidservant can do, a slave cannot do. But a, a, a male slave can do that. If he's paying cash, or value of the equivalent of cash, he could also do it. So evidently, you know what Siddhartha says, you know what we're speaking about? She writes a document saying, I owe you the amount of money you give her a, an IOU. Siddhartha says, it can't be. Does that make sense? The man has a diamond, and you're giving him a piece of pottery. Right? That Siddhartha says, therefore, it cannot mean that that you redeem her against the will of the master by giving him an IOU and she, she gains her freedom. Impossible. So the Gemara says, what is it, Balkorcha? Against the will of the father. The will of the father says an argument. Rashi and Tosa said, the father has money. He has money. He doesn't want to redeem, he doesn't want to redeem his daughter. The court, the court, force him to redeem his daughter. If he wants to redeem his daughter, of course he could redeem her. That, that's the case of Giron Kesef, right? That's a man, a person could buy. But what about the father? She has no money, the father has money. The father doesn't want to redeem his daughter. The court forces the father to redeem his daughter. It's that it's against the will of the father. So, 
the purpose of that is marriage. It's an option for the buyer to have him or his son or sons marry, marry her. Marry her. Because why does a man normally sell a daughter? Because he's fallen on the hard times. I understand that. Now, to extricate her from this, I thought, because if she now goes and has a relationship with somebody else, it's, it's, it's bordering on adultery. Not, not before she's married by the master or his son? No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. Not. Not, definitely not. That's only the the son. The master gives it to a son to marry. So what is the nature of the relationship? She's a maidservant. No different... At that point, no different than uh, a, a, an Ebed Ivry, uh, a male servant. And she can buy herself out of that? Definitely, definitely. She can buy herself out, and, and the mass is forced to release her. And the father can buy her. Definitely, money. right, correct. Anybody, any, any Jew comes up with the money, provides money, the master is forced to release her. No different from the man. Exactly. Right, we're saying she has something in addition over the male slave. But that's not forced. But you're saying that the man's not No, that's not forced. That, that's definitely not. You're saying that the father can be forced. That's the maftinos of Balkorchel. Right. That's what we're talking about. We're speaking. The father has money, and the father's not interested in redeeming his daughter. We'll see tosis. Man says, "Cause what? I'm going to have to support her. Let him support her. So he's a miser. Yeah, the man's not interested in marrying. What if he's not interested in marrying her? So he keeps her for the full years. So the father has it easy. He's a miser. He doesn't want to support his daughter. No, he has to say, if if he uses the mu edis, of course he has to. He has to say it. Of course he has to. He has to state his intent. That in the presence of witnesses, no. The question is, where's the money? He's not giving you the money. He has his intent. Right now, I am married her. It's not retroactive from the time he bought her. Whenever he says I am marrying her, she becomes his wife at that moment. In front of witnesses. It's irrelevant. First of all, she's a minor. Her 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 refusal. That's not the one. What once the father gave that right over, it's like like she refuses the 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 father giving over in marriage. It's irrelevant. If he says, I'm marrying you before she gives him the money, she then. Comes to him and says, Here's my money, I want my money. And he says, No, I'm married. At this moment. At this moment. So maybe she's married. She is married. She is at that moment. Hey, he didn't say that. He accepts the money. He's married. It's too late. It's late. She's not a maidservant any longer. The moment he, she wants to give him the money, he has to take the money. I'm not sure if exactly at that moment. No, no. Okay. Could be at the moment she wants to give the money, he has to release her. At that moment. If he did not exercise the right of marriage before she presents the money to him. Before she presents the money to him, he says, I'm married to you. There's, no There's not even the question. There's no kin in her pocket. No, no, she didn't even make the offer. We're talking about she didn't make the offer. And he's not even aware that he's making the offer. Let's see, she's aware, he's aware she's going to make the offer tomorrow. And he says that pri the previous day, Harate me Yedisli. I'm marrying you're married to me. She has no rights. No, she's his wife. She's his wife. She's there. She's no longer a maidservant. Now she's his wife. Redeeming yourself is only for a maidservant. She's no longer a maidservant. He knows that she's gonna give him the money the next day. Doesn't make a difference. But until she redeems herself, she's not redeemed. He's not interested in marrying her. The man doesn't want to marry. You think he's, he's going to marry her, to, not, not to release her? If he does, that's, it, that's, it, that's his prerogative. From the day that she was sold into Every day he has the right to say, you're my wife. No, he only has a right. That's not she's the happy. The man is better than her father. She's very happy there. It's irrelevant. I'm giving an example. You don't have to give that example. 
You don't have to give that example. You don't have to give that example. It doesn't matter what she thinks and what she wants. Her father comes, somebody comes up with the money and says, I'm giving you money to buy yourself out. And she exercises that right. She's out. She's no longer maid servant. That I understand. But the master creates the master. Doesn't matter. She's his wife. Because redeeming yourself for a maid servant. She's his wife. So where does this whole idea that the deco is We'll come to the second parak. The Gemara says, of course, she should be asked. She should be asked. When a father, not within the context of Almevria, if a man marries off his daughter as a minor, and she should be asked, and she, we're talking about she's old enough, where she has an understanding, do you want or don't you want? She should be asked that question, although she's a minor. Why? Because it says, That's the basis for it. Because just as you would want to be asked, being put in such a situation, so wait, when Satosa says over there at the beginning of the second parak, today, I do says because today, in very serious, terrible times, loose, it's the best interest of the, of the daughter to. Otherwise, you never know what 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 the, the daughter tomorrow. Says that. But we protect the, 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 our children. So, what is the this age in which a girl can be sold as a maid servant? She can be sold from the moment she's born. Even though she can't do anything, but she's a maidservant. I am marrying this infant. She doesn't have to be asked. The, the master says in presence of witnesses, girl is my wife. The father is selling the girl at age three. Age three. Correct. By the time she gets to eight or nine, before the end of the six years, she now has an understanding okay. about what condition she's in. And she has zero interest in being in this relationship. It's just too bad. Exactly. 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 What would be the father would do it? And the father says, it's too bad. Is the father doing the right thing? The answer is no. But she's married. Because she's under the jurisdiction of the father with regard to marriage. And becomes an adult, he has that right to marry whether she likes it or not. But what's the optimum way to do it? You should consult with her. And that's what we learn from, from Rivka. She's never sold into slavery. No. Exactly. Okay, let's now we're going to review the brisa. Quoted the brisa. Amamar, yesh beivri shem beivriya. We find laws pertain to the ivri, which have no relevance to the Jewish maid servants. And we said six years, yovel, right? And nisus adon, the death of the master. Remini, we learned earlier in the Mishnah, yisera olav amivriya, that in addition. To what, what we find by the male, 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 male Jewish slave, it's Yisera, she has an additional way of exiting. Shekonet Asim Bishimonim. So how do we reconcile the two? So she's also Yotzis Bishesh and Biyovel Mises Odom. So how do we reconcile the Bryce with the Mishnah? Omar Rav Sheshes, Gochi Yiado. We're speaking where he married her. When the master marries her, she no longer has the option of the six years, Yovel, or the death of the husband, the death of the master, because it's no longer a master, it's a husband. Versus Pshito, Yida Pshito, you have to tell me that. She's no longer a maidservant. All those laws pertain to, a, to an Amivriya, she's no longer an Amivriya, correct? Well, but the Gemara is going to ask that question also, but right now the Gemara is asking Pshito. 
Pshita, it's understood. Gita boy. I mean, is there even a consideration she go out with Sheshonim? She needs to get. She's a married woman. Right? So Mara says, Mao de Semo lo lift lo hilchso, mino. You may think that the halacha of Sheshonim or Yovel or the death of the Odin, that should not cease to be, cease to apply to her. Kamash Mulan, that it does not apply to her. Good question. Right? The obvious is a good question. Okay. So now, so the way it's explained, the Rishonim explained it this way. Normally, if a woman wants a get, it's irrelevant what she wants. Unless it's within a halachic reason that she has to be divorced, the woman is actually, she's, she's, she's bound to that relationship. And unless the husband agrees to divorce her, she, she's, not, she's not released. At best in the Davines, they could force him to release her. Because, but he has to say, Rotsani, he has to consent. Under, under duress, under coercion, he says yes. But any other way, she cannot be released. But I would think, since the Torah says, Sheishonim, or Yovel, I would think maybe over here, because since over here she only entered as a maidservant, of course she'll need to get. The only way this relationship could be terminated is a get. However, when six years come, she has a right to demand, I want to be released. I don't want to stay in the marriage. A normal, a normal marriage where she, enters, she consents to enter into that relationship, then it's up to the husband to release her or not to release her with the get. But over here, I would think she retains the rights of the Ome Vriyo, of the Sheishonim, and the Yovel. And therefore, she could demand the get after six years. Kamash Malon, no. If she becomes his wife, it no longer has relevance to her. It is, a diff- it is a different kind of marriage. No, it's... No, no, no. Okay, let's, let's look. You know, women say it's not fair. It's not fair. The man, he controls the wife. Let's say a woman knows in advance. Jewish marriage means when you enter this relationship, there's no exit unless the husband releases you from it. And woman says, you know, sometimes I'm okay with it. Because I believe the issue will never come up in the future. They said, but you know, theoretically, you know, some, I'm willing to take the chance. And that's the reality of Jewish marriage. So she's entering into a relationship initially, knowing that there's no exit clause out of this relationship, unless the husband releases you. Okay, so he's stuck there forever. Unless he releases you. What about an Amivri? How did she get involved in this relationship? Right? That, that's not the understanding. Torah says Sheishon and Torah says Yovel. So I would say, even though he has the right to marry her, but within that context, six years comes, she has a right to be out. Of course he has to give her a get. Because that's the only way you terminate marriage. But that's, that's the initial understanding of, of the nature of this relationship. That's the difference. Kamash no. Once she becomes his wife, she's bound to all the laws of a wife. And she shot him in Yovel, no longer has any relevance. She's no longer, she's no longer number. She's a wife. She changed she's changed the status. So therefore, she shot him Zaloch and Omivrio. Yovel Zaloch and Omivrio. She's not an Omivrio, she's a wife. Right? That's the understanding. Now, what's the basis for marriage for a Noahide woman? What we call a Gentile. It says, Vedovak Vishto, right? We read by Odom, last week's parsha. It says, Vedovak Vishto, he cleaves to his wife. That's marriage by a non Jew. Two people agree to live together as man and wife. That's, that's marriage. What's divorce? We'll see you. I'm, I'm, I want to extricate myself from this relationship. And that's it. And, she, and she, she could walk out as he could walk out. Either way. Either way. Right? Is it a concept of adultery? From definitely. Adultery? Definitely. 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 That's, that's, the, that's the basis for adultery. It says, You're only permitted to cleave to your wife, but not to the wife of, of another man. Mm-hmm. So let's say a woman, you know, they're, they're, they're okay together, but she wants to have an extramarital affair. That's adultery. Because you do have a husband. How do you have an extramarital affair if you have a husband? And the Death. Any one of the Noahide laws. A, a non-Jew steals. He's, he's, he's liable for the death penalty. Yes, yes, yes. Adultery is one of them. Yes. And it, it, this, is, it, this is the basis. But she can terminate What? She can terminate the marriage. Yes. 
she could terminate. She could terminate. No, there is a Kenyan. The agreement, that that they agreed to be together, that's marriage. They, they, they decide that the parting. That is, it is a Kenyan. It is a Kenyan. Okay, but the, but the, no, what I'm saying, but there's a consequence. The, king does mean, there's a consequence. What is king? There's a consequence. There's, there's a bond, right? What does is, what is, what is king mean? There's a bond. There's a bond between them. But there's a bond. Sure. Definitely. Well, it's no different than Jewish marriage. A man can marry his wife, divorce her as many times as he chooses. That's something else. No, there could be, but he can't come back. But, but if he comes back, it's, it's a marriage, but it's, they're living in sin. Right? It's like a coin marrying a Grusha. Right? A man divorces his wife, and she remarries, then she gets divorced, and the, that not, but let's say he remarries her. It's a valid condition. Right? The marriage. She commits adultery. It's adultery, even though the second husband is, wasn't permitted to marry her. It's like a coin marries a Grusha. And then she commits adultery. It's adultery. Okay. Yeah. You know what the Rambam says. There's a posuk it says, Umodor et Zimo. The land becomes rife with Zimo. Zimo's promiscuity, illegitimacy. So he says, how do you really keep a lid on it to know mm-hmm. parentage? That brothers and sisters should not, you should not, you should not ultimately come to incest. If a man, if a man lives with a woman, and marriage is just, it says two people, they meet at a crossroads, they like one another, and they feel they'll stay together for a while, then they part. And then she goes on to another man. So she may have, she may, she may actually, she may be pregnant. Or she is pregnant, she's not pregnant. How do you keep, how do you keep count of how many relationships he has? So she has a son, then she has a daughter. She doesn't know, we don't even know who, with the parentage of who what, a brother ends up marrying a sister. So ultimately, the whole society becomes rife with, with incest. The Torah says, no, man is married to a woman. She's, she's exclusive to the husband. And unless you undergo that particular ritual called divorce, she's bound to him. She's locked in. She's locked in. She can't. Because there's, there's a concept of Kedusha Yisrael. There's Kedusha, which has no relevance to the non-Jew. So it's really, it's a safeguard to maintain the, you know, the famous Ramban. The Gemara says that during Bais Rishon there were, there were revealed miracles. The, the Mishnah says, in Pirkei Avos, there were ten revealed miracles every day at the base of Migdosh. Bais Sheni, there were no revealed miracles. There was only one revealed miracle in Bais Sheni. You know, that was David. This is not the Sifurno. The Ramban says, Me Soto. If a woman commits adultery and the husband suspects, and he was, she was forewarned, and was witness, she sequ- sequestered with another man, takes her to Beis Amigdash, she's given, goes, undergoes, and she's agreeable. She claims her innocence. She undergoes her, the Sota ritual. What happens if she committed adultery? Something miraculous happens. She bloats and she dies. There's a miracle. So the Ramban says, why, if there are no revealed miracles during Bayashani, why did this remain? He says, because Klal Yisrael is based on Kedusha Yisrael. It's Kedusha. Illegitimacy, illegitimacy undermines the essence of what, you, what, what Klal Yisrael is. Therefore, though we weren't worthy of revealed miracles, this revealed miracle state remained even during Bayashani. That's the Ramban. Okay. So the Mara asks, so we're learning the Brisa, and we're saying the reason why six years of Yovel has no relevance to because she's married. She's a married woman. It says, and she has one thing over him. She's released when she reaches puberty. Hochi Kamar. So more answers. In lo yado, if in fact he did not marry her, yotz apisimonim. In addition to the six years in Yovel, in addition she has simonim. She's released with puberty, with adulthood. No, yeah, otherwise there's no other way to understand the brisa. If the brisa is speaking that he married her, and that's why the evidivri has these various releases over her. So if we're speaking within context, she's married. So what does it mean? She's released with Simone. Right? 
Exactly. That's what we're saying. We did not. So Simona means in addition to the six years and to the Ovim. In addition. You know, it's interesting. A father... We, we discussed this. The halacha is that if two people buy an esrog as, as a partnership, it should be partnership in an esrog, then I would say, unless it's a matonam las lahazir, right? Unless you give it as a gift, although it's a conditional gift, but when you take the esrog, because it's ulakachtem lochem, it has to be lochem, you have to fully own the esrog. So the rush in, in sukkah discusses a case. A person purchases an esrog in partnership, and the man says, look, for 30 days from Rosh Chodesh, Tishrei, until for the full month, the esrog is mine. In Cheshwan, you could have the esrog. You could have it forever. That's what he tells his partner. So during Tishrei, the esrog is fully yours. The month of Tishrei, a yotze. So the Rosh says, you're not yotze. Because factually, you have a partner. Because you have a partner... In the Esrug now, although he cannot exercise any of his ownership rights now, but it's rare after Tishrei. So, even now, when you own something, you own something for now and forever. So, presently, there's another interest in the Esrug besides the one who has the Esrug. That's a partnership. Lochem means it has to be fully yours. Factually, the Esrug, even during the 30 days, is not fully yours. Because for after 30 days, your partner has an interest in the Esrug. That's the rush in, in Sukkah. Correct? A father marries off his daughter. A daughter is in the domain of a father as long as she's a minor. Okay? He, so, we could say like this. He marries his daughter. He, excuse me, he sells his daughter. Sells her. Now, when he sells his daughter, he sells her for six years. So, what does that mean? So, he'd say, she's in his domain for six years. What happens when she reaches adulthood? She leaves his domain. As long as she's a minor, so that means his intrinsic interest in her is only as long as she's a minor. I mean, she's not an adult yet because that hasn't come into existence yet. But he doesn't own her for adulthood, correct? But yet, if he marries her off, she's married forever. The right to marry off a, a, a daughter is even when she becomes an adult, she no longer has control over her life. She's going to be married to the husband, whoever he marries her to. So what do we see from there? That when it, so we see from that that when a father, she's in the jurisdiction of the, uh, of the father, she's in the jurisdiction of the father forever. Forever. However, adulthood extricates herself. It's not a, it's only he's, she's in his, her, his jurisdiction for a period of time. We see from this that she, he's in her, in, she's in his jurisdiction forever. Except adulthood allows her to extricate herself from that state of being under his jurisdiction. Because you see that for marriage. Because how could you affect something which is beyond your rights? He's affecting her life beyond your rights. Because when she becomes an adult, she, you, know, you have no right. You can't dictate her life. So how do you, how you are dictating her life? What you're doing now affects her life for the rest of her life, even as an adult. I, that, the oval is a question, right? That we... No, that's that because it's, it says avod ola olam. The Torah says that. Right. So good, so that's also yovel. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, so I'm saying when she becomes a major, the marriage has takes on. There's something changes in. So it's a mar It's a derisive marriage. Prior, nothing changes in the marriage. So anybody commits adultery with her, I mean, she has different level of liability because she's an adult now. But in terms of the adultery, he's. No, not when the father marries her off. As beat in the side, no, that's a rabbinic marriage. This is a Doraisa marriage. When a father marries her off, she can never walk out of that marriage. Unless the husband gives her a get. Right? If the brothers or the mother, after when, when the father no longer has the right to marry her off. Right? I mean, so you see this. I mean, there's no other way to understand it. Okay, a little further. The Bryson says, She cannot be sold and sold again. 
Mechlal David Ivri. So what's the inference? This is she cannot be sold twice, but the inference is but a David Ivri could be sold twice. Mechlal David Ivri Nimka Vinishne Vatanya. We learned in the Bryce differently. It says Bigne Vaso. When the court sells the David Ivri, this is the case where he stole. He's not able to compensate the person who he had stolen from. He sold Big Neva so for his theft. Okay? Vlo Big Felo. Interesting Shaila. Let's say the man is able to be sold for what he stole, but he's caught. See, this Kafer. He has to be, that's the p- penalty. See, he owes double. He has enough money to cover the principal, but not the Kafer. See, so there's a financial debt. And what's the financial debt as a result of what? Of stealing. So maybe we should sell him. Could the court sell him for the kefil of, of, of the theft? For the theft, but not for the kefil. Although the kefil is a derivative, a direct outgrowth of the theft. Interesting shayla. We have kashas omel asas lochiv. Two witnesses, they testify he had stolen. And the man's going to be sold into slavery. Right? So what do we say? Kashas omel asas lochiv. So, Kajazoma, you want that he should be sold in slavery, or let's say he had the um, means to sell, to, to, to compensate the, right? You should be sold in slavery. Begane faction, they didn't steal. This is for conspiring. Begane Vosso, no bizmomo. Begane Vosso, also, what does Begane Vosso indicate? Kevet shinim kapam acha, shuv en iatora shoy lamochro. If he sold once, you cannot sell him again. So, we, so what, how does it say in the Brisa that a maidservant cannot be sold more than once. But the inference is, but a male slave can be sold more than once. Here it says explicitly, right? If he sold once, it cannot be sold again. So there is no difference between the, the male slave and the female slave. So how do we reconcile the prices? No, but it's the same thing. It doesn't say that it says, a female slave can be sold more than once. I mean, the Gemara's going to answer, he stole twice. That's, that's going to be the Gemara's answer. Well, that's, that's going to be the Gemara's answer. That's well, we'll see. The Gemara's going to have all kinds of combinations to be continued.